Hey developers, today we're going to look at Flatiron's community driven bootcamp. It's an online bootcamp. It looks pretty cool. Let's see how it works. Let's try it out. Okay, let's take a look at the Flatiron School Web Development Bootcamp. You can actually get this for free if you're a student and you have a GitHub account. You can sign up for the educationgithub.com pack. You can get a free 30 day trial of the Flatiron School. It's a normally $150 value. Uh, if not, you should definitely check it out. This is not a paid sponsorship whatsoever. I just happened to sign up for it and I was going to try it out here live. I've never looked through this yet. So here is the web page, the GitHub student pack account sign up. So I'm going to click here to start my learning. Okay. Let's see what happens. Welcome to learn. We're thrilled that you've joined our community of learners. Learners is designed for people who are passionate, curious, self-driven, and absolutely serious about learning to code. That's me. I'm serious. I'm actually, I know how to code, but you know what? I can always get better. I can learn more. The learn curriculum. The curriculum is learn is designed for beginners. Yep, yep. And then it tells you some community and happy learning. Okay. So I guess we'll click next lesson. I'm done. Finished reading. Next lesson. Environment setup. You'll be want you'll be using the Learn IDE to complete the coding labs in your courses. You'll be spending a lot of time with the IDE, so let's take a few minutes to get able to use it. Download. You'll first need to set up the Learn IDE. Follow the instruction below. Click here to download the Learn IDE. So it kind of looks like Adam, and it has like a little box at the bottom. All right. Well, I guess we'll click here. And it's downloading 120 megs. The Chrome browser may give you a warning upon downloading. Install the Learn ID in computer and log in. So I will do that after it's done downloading. Then Learn ID is built. Yeah, okay, it is built on top of Atom, the text editor by the amazing people of GitHub. Once you open up the ID, you have three main components. And you follow the file browser, which lists your files and folders in your code. And then you have a little terminal at the bottom, kind of like what I've done in my previous videos. And don't forget to download it. All right, it's installed. So I'm going to go ahead and install it here. One sec. Okay, I got everything downloaded. Here is the Atom Learn IDE editor. And here is my window now. So it tells me. Don't forget to download the Learn ID. I did that, and now it wants me to type in run learn hello. So let's do that. Learn hello. It says hello Eric. So it looks like it worked. And let me change one setting here. It's a little small, so let me change the font size 23. Uh, I will like 24. Guess we can't make this any bigger, so you just have to live with that. All right, so confirm your environment. And click next lesson. Solving your first lab. Oh, exciting! Let's see what we do here. Now that you've got the Learn ID up and running, you've got you're going to use it to solve your very first lab on Learn. Open a lab by clicking Open on the page on Learn.co. Run the lab's test with the Learn CLI command. Make a change to your copy of this lab. Pass the test using Learn CLI command. Submit the passing lab with the Learn Submit CLI command. Okay. So instructions. In this lesson, you will practice the workflow that allows you to solve labs on Learn. Click on the open link in the lab toolbar above. So I'm clicking here. Okay, there's a pop up here. So open learn ID. Okay, so it opened up in a new window here. Let me, can you see it? I guess you can see it. Okay. After you click on the Learn ID that will launch, you will see all the files associated with the lab in the Learn ID file browser. That's kind of neat. Get all the, the files you need here. 
In the console on the bottom pane, run the test suite by typing learn and hitting enter. Okay, so I'm gonna type in learn. Okay, so it fails. You made an edit to that it may fail. Negative one. First lab, you must edit edit dash me dot text file. Okay, so let's read the lab here. Yeah, you'll see something similar to here. You can see your test is currently failing, which is fine. We haven't done any work yet, so it makes sense. The fail reads, make sure you've edited the files. To pass the sag, make, make any changes to the editme.txt file. This file starts off empty. You can do this by clicking on the name of the file in the file browser in the left pane, then empty file will load in the text. Once your local tests are passing, you can submit the lab by clicking learn submit. Okay, so let's click edit me. I guess we're gonna type something here. Hello world. It's kind of neat all my Atom plugins are installed, so, okay. And okay, so I guess we'll, can I clear it? Okay, I'm gonna type learn, learn, let's see what happens. All right, you made an edit to, you can't see it on the screen here, but there's like a little box that pops up and says, solving your first pass, local build passing. Okay, everything passed. So after you get everything passed, you just solved your first lab. Okay, fork this lab, pass local tests, met pull request. So make a change, copy this lab, pass the testing and learn, submit the passing lab with learn submit CLI command. And I guess here's more directions. And I guess we'll just do learn submit. Learn submit. So it's committing a change. It's kind of like doing a GitHub commit I suppose like a get commit it's done all right starting your course you're about to learn start learning to code as part of community power bootcamp good luck you're going to do great yes I'm gonna continue doing great all right so here's kind of it gives you me a streak of what I've been doing since I've passed my first test, I guess I have a one day streak going. And even gives me names of other people that are much farther along than I have. I guess they do a bunch of Ruby here. So let's, and you can even ask a question at this point if I wanted to. And I, there's like a little chat room. So 402 students completed this part. All right, let's continue. Let's do one more. Oh, there's a video. Let's uh, let's listen to the video. Welcome to the Community Power Bootcamp. Hi, I'm Avi Flumbaum, co-founder and dean of the Flatiron School, and it's my pleasure to welcome you to our Community Power Bootcamp for learning how to code. Since we started Flatiron School over four years ago, our goal has always been to provide students with the most accessible path to learn a code and launch their careers. Not only do you learn the technologies and languages and frameworks that power modern development and that the market right. 1,000, we know that students will stack web developers ask a question so the entire community right, can have right. a lot of faith. So he's just every going on and on about the boot camp. I'm done. Next lesson. We're excited to join the first ever community driven boot camp. As Muni Community Power Boot Camp, you have access to the same full stack web development curriculum used in person and structured led programs. A lot of content to go through, over 800 hours of lessons and projects. And it's hard at times. Blah, 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 blah. Be diligent. Be social. Ask questions. Study groups. Learn chat. Be scrappy. Read your error messages. Google your problems. Ask a peer. Be generous. Okay. I read that. Next lesson. So I already created my learn account. You set up your environment. Let's start quickly review all content workers. All about lessons. So we have like the navigation screen we were at before. I guess there we can see, I guess that's this page here. Let's go back to where we were. 
yeah, that's the screen. We have different lesson types. There's readmes, there's labs. Okay. And now it's telling me introduction, learn about building tic-tac-toe in Ruby. And of course, we're going to learn how to build tic-tac-toe in Ruby. Just in case you're unfamiliar with the game, let's discuss the rules. Tic-tac-toe is a play to game. Why build a tic-tac-toe? Okay. So it's really making me learn here. You could say dot bin tic-tac-toe. Once you build your two-player version of tic-tac-toe, So the general procedure of tic-tac-toe is false. So we'll, we'll probably do just a couple lessons of this. I'm not going to do the whole thing. I just kind of get an idea of how this works. So create a structure to store, represent the state of the board, welcome the players, get the user to move, make sure the move is valid, check to see if the game has been won. OK. So let's talk a little about the creator of Ruby. We know a lot about Ruby, so I'm not going to read it all. If you want to, just look at the Wikipedia for Ruby, I guess. Describe a program. What's a program? Interpreted versus compiled. Depending on the compiled language you're using, you either compiled or interpreted. So we know that Ruby is interpreted. Once you've read this file, you can run it through Ruby Interpreter to execute it. So it's kind of give us the background of Ruby. Done. So we're going to make a file that will print hello world to your terminal. Create a new Ruby file, write it to hello world, run the Ruby file, run the Ruby gem. Get started by clicking the open button and learn. Okay, let's click open. Open learn ID. So I guess it's going to change my ID here. And I don't know if you can see it. There it is. All right, so here's my new project. And so it gives us, I guess we can read the objectives on the web page or inside the Atom editor. I guess it's the same. Create a new Ruby file, syntactically valid code to produce Hello World, run a Ruby file, run the learn gem, submit a learn. Creating a file. So actually, I don't do too much Ruby, so I'm going to learn a little bit here. I know enough to get by. I've done some Rails work. You need to create a text file called hello ruby.rb. Okay, let's do that. It's a file. Let's see here, file, new file. Hello world.rb. Fox is a common code. Yeah, so it's just telling you that you need to use .rb. And it even tells you exactly what to put in here. In the file that you created, you need to write a single line of code that prints the string hello world to your terminal. To print the Ruby, you need to use the method puts, which checks out out. So we can do puts. Let's see if we can type something here. Puts. Hello world. Is that all it wants me to do? Uh, exclamation point. Exclamation point. Anytime you change a file, such as this one you made, all you need to save it. Executing your file. Okay. Ruby. Hello world.rb. There's my hello world. Okay. You should see this. Running learn. Confirm everything's working by running the learn command. Let's type learn. All right. One example, zero failures. I guess, I guess it has a spec here. You could see it does the, uh, expects the standard output to receive with hello world. So I guess this is your, um, some R spec to do your testing with. That's basically what it's doing. So everything's working. So let's just submit this. So learn 
and submit. Looks like it's pushing up to GitHub. Submitting lesson done. All right, so it looks like I can even share my success. Full stack community bootcamp. Hello world. So I could like share this to everybody if I wanted to. I'm not going to. All right, that was pretty simple. I'm gonna click next lesson and see what else is next. All right, so it goes back to tic tac toe. I'm sure, it's gonna slowly walk me through what I need to do to get this working. So thank you. Um, this is just a quick introduction on how to use this. Oh, I might do a few more videos on these. If you guys like it, just let me know. Hey, thanks for watching my video on the Flatiron Development Bootcamp. If you like this video, please click that subscribe button. That really, really helps me. Thank you. Have a great day. Peace.